She's loved by labor, castigated by vaccine foes, and gets both love and condemnation from Lyft and Uber drivers, depending on how they feel about unionizing. Lorena Gonzalez. The name probably doesn't ring a bell unless you watched her leading the fight to make companies treat gig workers as employees. But she's one of the most powerful lawmakers in California. I'll sit when they read my bio or my resume, and it'll say the first Latina, the first Latina, the first Latina. And I find that amusing almost because it seems so pathetic that, you know, it's taken this long. For this episode of The Deciders, Laura Rosenhall sits down with Assembly member Lorena Gonzalez. Gonzalez graduated from Stanford, Georgetown, and UCLA Law School while being a single parent. She went on to become San Diego labor leader and ultimately I, Lorena Gonzalez. first Latina chair of the Assembly Appropriations Committee. That bureaucratic mouthful refers to the committee that decides where every bill with a large price tag lands. Here's how it works. Bills come to Gonzalez's committee, and the committee either moves them forward or kills them. It's a powerful way to pull the purse strings of the fifth largest economy in the world. Twice a year, the committee opens or closes the state's coffers via the suspense file, where in a few hours, yes, hours, hundreds of bills head to the floor for a vote or die in committee. None of those bills get an assembly floor vote without going through her. Does it ever feel like being the appropriations chair means doing some of the assembly's dirty work? No. Is it also part of the job to shield other Democrats from having to vote on something that's politically difficult or maybe a little silly? I think um, most of my bills are pretty hard to vote on for some of the Democrats, and they usually get through. So I don't think that that's, that, you know, it, it's tough to be a legislator. Located along the Mexico border, the district she represents is majority Latino and working class. Voters elected her in 2013, and they definitely picked a fighter. You were arrested yourself for protesting at a Kaiser strike. Was that a first for you? No, I've been arrested before. I was a labor leader. So part of being a labor leader is, you, you know, you, you engage in civil disobedience. Like how many times do you think you've been arrested? Probably a handful. And has it always been for labor issues, labor Absolutely. strikes? So oh, every has been on behalf of certain workers. Now that, you know, you're an elected official, you're supposed to look at this much bigger picture, consider a variety of viewpoints mm -hmm. in making your decisions. And how do you balance that responsibility with your allegiance to the labor movement? My allegiance is to workers. And I was elected by my constituents very clearly as a, a labor organizer, as an advocate for workers. And, and sometimes that's through through labor bills or bills that labor sponsors because it's pulling up all workers. Like, I, I have no, I don't think there's a conflict there. Does labor ever give you bad bills? I don't take bad bills. The Chamber of Commerce would beg to differ. The Chamber has a successful record of squashing bills they label job killers. Gonzalez's bills are usually on the kill list, but many of them make it to the governor's desk. It's tough, but they're also not job killers. I mean, they've used a title uh, to describe a bill that's inaccurate. Rather than run away from that, I, I just embrace it and say, you know, it's a chamber of commerce, right? Do they fight worker rights? What I do is about worker rights. She's carried bills giving benefits to professional cheerleaders, earned sick leave to private sector employees, and overtime pay to farm workers. And remember that bill to make gig workers employees? Any fear that that could become a more widespread strategy, that if you don't give industries the carve-outs they want, that we'll have a ballot loaded up with these questions? This threat of a ballot initiative to, to force the legislature to act in a certain way just shows how broken our ballot process is. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to be moved by companies that... Um, refuse to treat their workers well. I feel very on solid ground on this, that we're in the right spot. And so, um, you know, I think that's a discussion for California in a state that has such dire income inequality. When she's not passing legislation, she's known for spending time here. Twitter, anti-vaccine protesters, Uber's chief attorney, and even this guy. 
Rob Schneider, the actor from Deuce Bigelow, the male gigolo, have all tweet clashed with Gonzalez. Is, is Tina here? Social media, you use it a lot. You're very direct on social media, but have you ever felt like you crossed the line or shared too much? Until recently, I would have said no. I am who I am, and I'll say things, and I think I tweet things, and, and it's not meant in a certain way, but I, I have seen lately how somebody can take that and massively distribute it in, into a form that's not true. And that's tough, right? You're like, hold up, that, that was a joke, or that's not what I meant, or, you know, but they're, the context um, is off. Th but that's a consequence, and I think it's worth it. While she doesn't plan on giving up her Twitter fingers, she has learned firsthand about online harassment. Now I understand what can happen with social media to a point where, like, relentless harassment. I want you to die. Your daughter's the N-word. You know, you're trash. You're fat. You're ugly. Like, constant. I'm okay. I'm a grown-ass woman. I can deal with that. But, like, God, we've got to have a discussion about how it can be used. Because now I suddenly understand these, these moms who come about, like, the bullying on social media for their kids. That's a real problem. And then there's this. You began your time in public office as a single mom. Mm -hmm. And now you're married to Nathan Fletcher, who mm -hmm. used to be a Republican assemblyman, is now a Democratic San Diego County supervisor. So how did you convert him? He, he became a Democrat before we got married. <laughs> I don't think I would marry a Republican. I mean, maybe, but. Um, so he became a Democrat when we were simply friends. Gonzalez isn't planning on leaving the Capitol anytime soon. She's running for another term in the assembly, and she announced her 2022 run for Secretary of State. Her labor buddies have already kicked in money for both campaigns. For Cal Matters, I'm Baronda Lyons.